as it's starting. All right. Live. All right. So, I so won't waste any time. Um, but yeah, so this is our first, or my first YouTube live anyway. And we'll just wait, let people come in, but we're actually just going to get started with the, the broadcast here. And we have a few points to touch on today. Um, yeah, I'm Alex from This Cop House, and this is um, my assistant, Joy Davis. We're actually building a cop house for her down here in Florida, northern Florida. So uh, we've been working on the house here this week, and we figured we'd come here and do a live uh, YouTube video to promote the workshops coming up. So um, kind of the topic we have today here is some of the realities of building a cob house. So there's just so many misconceptions about building with cob, like it's just some little um, arts and crafts project that you do for fun on the weekend and you'll have a house magically appear. Um, so <laughs> I just really want to kind of um, clear up and dispel some of these misconceptions and bring some realities to the situation. Um, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to encourage people to build this way, but really have to clear up some of these misconceptions. So that's what we'll be um, talking a lot about here. Don't forget to tell them there's dirt everywhere. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't like getting your nails dirty, this is really not for you. Um, unless you want to hire somebody to do all the work for you, you know, because it's a dirty job. You know, it's a lot of hard work. Yes. Your floor will be dirty. There will be dirt in your window sills, your door sills. Um, I would say don't even worry about keeping things perfect. Just just think it's a construction site. Keep things safe. And um, like if you do workshops, then you can clean it up real pretty and all that before people come. But other than that, just keep in mind safety first is my um, take on everything. That's what I'm learning because I think my first two workshops, oh, everything had to be perfect. I had to clean the buckets. I had to have... You no, know, no dust or loose dirt on the walls or on the windowsills. I'm sweeping everything. And yeah. It's not, it doesn't have to be like that at all. No. Hey, and uh, you guys viewing, if you want to put in the chat, um, if you can hear us, put a one. And if you can't hear us, put a zero. Just so we make sure we got everything set up here right. Um, so what were some of the, the main points we had. I mean, we've been building this cob cottage here down in Florida for a little over a year now. Um, I mean, that's one thing we could talk about. You know, these are long-term projects. So if you want to do a workshop to build a cob house, it's going to take a long time still. It's not like you can just come together and, and put one together in a week. Um, we're on workshop number six, I believe. And this is a small, yeah, this, but this is a small building. This is only like 140 square feet on the interior. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, you know, it takes a long time. We might get only a foot of height each week. So, All the way around. Yeah, so it's a lot of work. And that's uh, something people need to keep in mind when they want to build this way. Yeah, I would say, and correct me if I'm wrong, with a team of people, we're able to do about this much around every day, sometimes double. So with yeah. a week process, you're talking maybe a foot. Yeah. So if you think that every workshop, um, it's, it's a very realistic expectation. And sometimes we've done a little less. Sometimes we've done a little more. Yeah. And sometimes it depends on the region you're in, mm -hmm. um, what kind of soil you have. The soil here in northern Florida is very sandy. And so you do have to make the mix a little bit more wet which slows down the building process. Now, like if you're in a place like North Georgia or Tennessee where the, the soil is very clay dense and thick, um, you can build a lot higher per day. You can almost build a foot per day in those kind of regions. So there's, there's other variables here to consider, but still, either way, it's going to take a lot of work, a lot of time. So it, it's not something that, that goes quick usually. Right. And I would say, one of the challenges that I've dealt with at my workshops is plastic on the walls, because I would say this is probably the fourth 
round of plastic that I bought and put up there and and uh, maybe it's overkill but at the same time the the walls change so sometimes you uh, I think I started out with the painters plastic that you roll out and it's like three feet wide and that worked for a long time um, I just you know bought that a few different times because it goes over the walls and it hangs over about this much so it creates a nice little drip edge but as the walls get bigger um, what did we buy last time? Was it five foot wide or six foot wide or ten? Yeah, probably, I can't remember. Um, might have been ten. Ten. Ten foot wide. Yeah, yeah, because the walls are about two foot thick, and then it hangs over so many feet on each side, which right. is nice because it yeah. helps protect the walls. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, like around the door, we have to cut it just right, and around the windows because we want to. Yeah, just to keep it protected from the rainfall here mm -hmm. like and especially this season it's raining here almost every afternoon here in north florida so mm -hmm. but um it's something to do it's a good practice to, to keep it protected when you're not working on it at least mm -hmm. and if you know i guess there's going to be weather for so many days where it doesn't rain then you can keep it uncovered and yeah if you're not there it can allow time for it to dry yeah for the I most mean, part i keep it covered. yeah i mean your, your walls aren't going to melt away um I mean, they'll get damaged over time, so it's good to keep them wrapped or covered with plastic or something, or some kind of roof structure. But your walls won't just melt away. They'll like compact a little bit, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, they can get some erosion damage, um, but you know, it really takes a lot, a lot of rainfall, a lot of time, just mm -hmm. under the the elements to really damage it. Um, but it's good practice to keep it protected, just you know, for highest quality walls. Mm -hmm. I've noticed with mine, sometimes there's like a water line. Yeah, yeah, you can mm -hmm. you can see the water, the erosion line sometimes, especially here in Florida. Because the clay is very sandy, um, it erodes quicker than the very clay dense soils, like up north, mm -hmm. or, you know, north, like as in Georgia, Tennessee area. Mm -hmm. um, I think, some things to expect too is um some it's nice to have some cash on hand money in the bank um ex expect to you know my opinion expect to put in some money because you want it done right you don't want it to last three years and start to decay and crumble and it's all this hard work and i'm sure money that you've put into it but if you put a little more money a little more time a little effort good foundation, good roof, all this good stuff. Uh, it, it's going to last a lot longer. I really, yeah. really learned that in working with Alex, which is why I just yeah, work with Alex. Definitely pays off to put the money in where it counts. And a lot of people like to be very frugal and they like to save money. Um, but it, it really, it's kind of shortchanging yourself in the end. Um, like I've done a lot of projects with people where they want to save money and like they'll, they'll really just, buy the cheapest option available for something like their foundation. And if it's like, for example, the foundation is not done right, everything you do after that is, is kind of pointless because if that foundation won't last, nothing above that is going to last. So like if you build your house and the foundation is just made with like bags of dirt, it's going to degrade over time. The whole house is going to crumble. You know, if, if those bags crumble, everything above it is going to crumble. So I, especially for foundations, definitely, you know, don't skip on that. Um, put the time and the money into that, and it'll be definitely worth it in the end. And would you say maybe something to remember is a good hat, good boots? So right. yeah. yeah. A good overhang. Good roof overhang. <clears throat> um, maybe a two-foot overhang at least. Um, and good boots, it refers to the foundation, um, having you lifted off the ground at least a foot, foot and a half mm -hmm. to protect the earth walls from the ground, and, you know, the moisture. And that has to do also with like rain splashback, because I've noticed with mine, mine's two foot above the dirt line, and splashback is, I mean, leaves about six inches before it gets to that cob wall, so yeah. I'd say yeah, yeah. I recommend two feet. Yeah, yeah, two feet's good, really. That if you can, if you can put the money effort into making your foundation stem wall two feet, even better. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what else we got? Um, I uh, wildlife. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, some people just don't like to, you know, deal with bugs and insects outside. So yeah, for you guys, you know, just getting in here, we're talking about some of the realities of building a house in general, but building with cob, building a cob house, building an, an earthen structure. Um, it's just, it's a big deal. And we're trying to dispel these misconceptions that it's just like a little arts and crafts project you put together over the weekend or something. I mean, it's a huge project trying to build an earthen home or building. Um, so yeah, it's like, you know, you're gonna be outside, you're gonna be muddy and dirty. There's bugs everywhere. So you gotta expect that kind of stuff. You know, your hands are gonna be dirty. Nails are gonna get dirty. So if you got pretty nails, you know, they're gonna get messed up. Yeah, um, maybe, maybe just decide that your nails are gonna go on a sabbatical for about a year or two. So <laughs> 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 um, keep them healthy. It's okay, it's a good thing. Yeah, hey, the clay is good for you. It uh, exfoliates. <laughs> exfoliates, yeah. <laughs> detoxifies you through the skin. So. Yes. It's, it's, um, um, I would say as far as the wildlife, we've there's these little caterpillars. They're kind of little yeah, yeah. fuzzy with little antennas, and we keep finding them all over the wall. And Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're just going to deal with yeah. bugs outside. That's just reality. You know, there's mm -hmm. wasps, there's hornets, there's little creepy crawly things. Frogs, <laughs> got all kinds of stuff here in Florida. Yeah. But yeah. And I guess they like it for the same reason we do. I mean, we want a comfortable living condition. And maybe that's why they yeah. use it. They won't be on or in the house when it's done. They just like to hang out around it and on it during the construction. So, yeah. you know, just keep that in mind if you're, if yeah. you're thinking about building, you know, you're going to have to deal with this stuff. Otherwise, you know, if you don't like that stuff, you're going to have to think about hiring somebody, you know, to do it for you because, you know, someone's got to do it. And, uh, mm -hmm. and once you're done, you seal it all up, you're not going to have a problem. So, yeah, yeah. but during the process, it's just something to keep in mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's just a bit of a frustration um, dealing with folks who think, well, you know, just come, let's do a workshop and, and we'll do it for a week and we'll all have a house after a week. But they don't want to put the effort into actually building it or doing any of the any of the work. I mean, even if even if uh, we did workshops to build a house, there's a ton of work in preparation before the workshops, between the workshops, and after the workshops. So the the person that wants to build a cob house or an earthen house has to be involved. There's a lot of work involved in doing something like this. And if you really just don't want to do it, you're going to have to hire somebody who will do it. That's just the reality. And I think I think overall too, if you have a know-how of power tools, all the more um, power to you right. <laughs> because. Uh, I mean, you can save a lot of money by just knowing how to, you know, operate a drill, operate a saw, you know, things like this. Um, I mean, yeah. basic concepts of how to do concrete. And by the way, we teach you all this stuff at the workshops. Yeah. We really do. We have we have different different lesson plans, different modules. Yeah. Because when people leave my workshop, I want them to know what they're doing. I want them to really have a good grip and grasp on all the fundamentals and everything. And I mean, we're we're totally yeah, we do. Yeah, we pretty much cover all the bases in mm -hmm. the workshop. Um, yeah, like I said, I think this is our, our sixth workshop here on Joy's project. Um, so we got everything down. I mean, we cover pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. um, You're going to know about rebar. You're going to know about how to use a saw. You're going to know about what a dead man is. So Yeah, and we've actually got a workshop coming up here in July on Joy's project. This is uh, the next stage in the process. Mm -hmm. And there's a link down below in the description. It'll take you to a page on my website uh, with all the details on the workshop. It'll list everything you're going to learn, um, the hands-on stuff, the classroom stuff, the modules, um, 
you know, pretty much everything you'll need to know about the workshop. There's testimonials from our past students and um, at the very bottom, there's information on lodging and, uh, you know, food accommodations, all the stuff around here and the pricing options. So if you have any interest in getting some hands on training with Cobb and earthen building, natural building, just construction in general, um, this is going to be a really great workshop. And um, yeah, so go check that out if you have any interest in that. Mm -hmm. And the pricing, um, you know, I have really good pricing for workshops. So I, I keep prices low. Mm -hmm. And when you come, you get his book in a printed out format. And we go through the book and we're, I mean, page at a time. We might skip to this page, but we're going to be coming back to this page. So when we're done, every page in that book is covered. Um, so we really mm -hmm. dissect the book and it's very impressive. Yeah, I mean, the workshops we set up here, um, I mean, I can say 100%. I mean, I can guarantee we we teach much, much more than what 90, 95% of other natural building workshops teach out there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's focused on Cobb because we're building a Cobb building, but it really covers all the principles and aspects of building in general and just natural building. You know, I talk about other earthen building modalities, um, other natural building techniques. I mean, we just cover a lot of information that you don't find in most workshops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think sometimes the um, the impression is when someone goes to a workshop, they're going to learn to step in the mud, which everyone wants to do, um, and, you know, put mud on a wall and this and that. But it's um, Alex's workshop is so much more than that. Twice a day, we break, and you're going to have probably a 30 to 45 minute um it's going to be lessons with the book and from there you're going to have a hands-on activity we're breaking everything down um i don't want to give too much away because it's it really is exciting um i have a teaching background so i'm assisting a little bit with that um but together we make a really great team and you're going to learn far more than you bargained for i can guarantee you that you're going to get your money's worth yeah for sure mm -hmm. um supplies i want to make sure we touch on supplies right yeah mm -hmm. um so there might, um, you know, we were talking about making sure there's funds available. You need to make sure that you have some good quality clay delivered in, like a truckload of it dumped in the right position. You may need some masonry sand, which is not beach sand. This is like serious sand with a grit. So make sure, too, that you're thinking of where can I dump this clay? Where can I dump this sand? You're going to need a mortar mixer. Um, this kind of falls under the line of tools, perhaps. But a mortar mixer will keep your team very happy during the workshop because we're not having to step in it constantly. Yeah. So I would say it's a necessity to have a mortar yeah. mixer. Yeah, that's kind of a standard that I have, um, whether it's for a workshop or a building project, is having a mortar mixer. So a mortar mixer is going to save you a tremendous amount of time and physical labor because um, the other option is to mix cob by foot, which is just complete manual labor. It's just going to burn you out quick. And it's just not practical for building in any kind of a, an efficient, timely manner. Um, so having a mortar mixer, specifically a mortar mixer. This is not a cement mixer. Um, it's called a mortar mixer. And you can look it up. Um, but you can usually rent one from a tool rental supply uh, for about a week for maybe $400. And it's totally worth the price. I mean, it's some investment up front there but it's totally worth the price if you're really serious about building because you're going to get a lot more accomplished than yeah. if you didn't have one yeah so if you have a small team of people say um i'd say as less as you know two to ten people a mortar mixer is great and if if you have more than that if you have a team greater than that i would just say get two mortar mixers um, that you can upgrade and you can use stuff like a bobcat or a tractor or a, a backhoe. Um, there's techniques for mixing cob with those tools, machinery. Um, but the mortar mixer is great. It's a really, really efficient tool for making this material. Um, so I totally recommend that. And yeah, if you're doing a workshop, I mean, if you do want to do a workshop with me, you got to have a mortar mixer. Otherwise, you know, there's 
it's not going to happen. I've done too many, too many projects to know. It's just mixing by foot is, is no fun. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes it. <laughs> it's not efficient. Um, unless you want to take a year or a couple of years, you know, building like every day, it, it's just not a good idea in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And buckets and shovels and um, I mean, because you, yeah. what we do is we load up the buckets and then from there, was it two or three gallon bucket? We dump it into the mortar mixer because it's just more practical rather than a five gallon bucket. Yeah. Um, it just, yeah. it really is. It's easier to handle. Your team doesn't wear out as quickly. They're not, you know, tired and exhausted. You don't want your, you know, anyone exhausted at all. You want yeah. everyone to have a good time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's a workshop. Yeah, you know, workshop. It's, it's for the experience, the, you know, teaching and having a good experience. If you really just want to, you know, hustle and, and build your building, it, it's great for that, of course, too. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say shade is important too. Um, and you need to know about the sunlight. Um, and we go yeah. through all this, you know, in the book as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but shade is, is, is good as far as where you want to focus on your work area. I mm -hmm. guess like where you're loading your buckets at. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a more minor, um, factor, but okay. yeah, it's important. It's important to keep, keep your, your workers shaded. Um, because the sun will just suck your energy out sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, what would be the difference in a concrete mixer versus a mortar mixer? Because I know yeah. sometimes it's like, what, what really is the difference? Um, they, they look different. I mean, they do look very different just from the exterior. Um, but what really sets them apart is the paddles inside. Um, a concrete mixer really just kind of tumbles the material. So it's just kind of falling in a tumbling fashion. Uh, the mortar mixer, on the other hand, has paddles where it, they're turning, kind of churning like that, and they're they're actually smearing the material. So it really kind of simulates um, like mixing by foot, but with machinery. So, so it like picks it up and smashes it, and it, yeah, it's like it smushes it and picks it up and throws it back down. It's it's constantly like smearing it and smashing it together. So that's what's required. Um, tumbling it, it doesn't work. Unless you're doing a very wet mixture, like maybe an earth plaster, um, a cement mixture will work for that, but not for a thick building material like cob. So would you say like a concrete mixer is more like a dryer? Like um, it picks it up and drops it, and that's why we don't want it. Well, the concrete mixer, you're going to have to have a wetter, a wet, more wet ah. material or mixture for it to be able to tumble. Um, so, like, you, like I said, I mean, you can do a, a, a earth plaster in a concrete mixer, but you can't actually build a wall with that because it's just far too wet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, any, anyway, the mortar mixer is what you guys need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do you want to talk any about how to identify the clays? Because I know I really struggled on this a few years ago. Like, what is this versus this? It all looks like clay, but it acts different. Yeah. Um, how um, would someone identify what the right kind of clay is to use to be ready to build with? Yeah, it's, it's hard to say without a, an example to show you guys mm -hmm. here. Um, but I, there's... There's several different ways you can test your soil, but the way I always recommend from experience is just to test different mixtures, you know, mixing different ratios of the soil to sand, um, and then taking that material and forming small blocks, just small blocks, they don't have to be any specific size, and then letting those blocks dry. And then over the course of, usually it only takes maybe two days, for these blocks to dry fully, at least if they're in the sunlight. Um, you can observe and see how they do, you know, are they cracking, are they um, are they breaking apart? You, you can drop them and see, you know, how they, how they react to, to dropping them. Um, but making test blocks is, is probably the best way to test your, your soil, um, your cob mixture. 
Now, what about like, is there like a wet test you can do when it's wet as well? Is there a wet drop test when you're um, making it? Yeah, when you're making it, yeah, this, this isn't as accurate of a test though. But when you're making the cloud mixture, you know, you can make a little ball of it, drop it from about hip height. And if it flattens out on the ground like a really flat pancake, then you know it's, uh, it's either too wet. Um, and if it just breaks apart and crumbles, then uh, it's either too dry or too much sand in there. So if you drop it in it, it pretty much stays together. Um, it's still going to flatten out a little bit either way, but if it pretty much stays together, then you know it's, it's decent. So move on and do um, complete the mixture, make the test blocks, and then let those dry and see how they do. Mm -hmm. And from there, you may get some cracking as well, right? Yeah, you might. You might. Um, you want to try and make a mixture that doesn't crack, though. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes I see you rub it. Um, Tell me about what you're looking for when you rub it. It's not as important, really, but it's you can see how how the uh, the mixture is going to erode once it's fully dry. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, if it just, if you can just scrape chunks off of it, then maybe it's not so good. And maybe you have too much sand. I know my first one I showed you was like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, here, Alex, look at this. And he's like, rub, rub, and it's crumbling, 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 yeah. crumbling. And it would not stop crumbling. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. That was a long time ago. It was. <laughs> yes. Um, so... Um, I have everything on my list. I think we discussed okay. unless something well, comes up. Well, um, I mean, we've had some people in here the whole time. Um, if you guys have any questions, yeah, please feel free to leave them in the comment section and we can answer any questions now. Um, I'll give you guys a minute to put questions in there. Otherwise mm -hmm. we can think of something else to talk about. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. What about a roof? Some people talk about how, um, you know, maybe you need a roof before you even start building. And some people choose to do that. Mm -hmm. Why would some people choose to do that versus not choose to do that? And what are some of the pros and cons? Um, well, there's a couple benefits to doing that. Um, one is that you have a roof over the whole structure from the beginning. So <clears throat> whatever you build underneath is protected from rainfall and the elements, which is a huge help. Then you don't have to deal with covering the walls with plastic and things like that. Um, whenever you finish up the day. Um, also keeps the sun off yourself and your team, um, you know, because that can drain you after a while with, uh, with the sun, um, you know, sunburns, whatever it might, might be. Probably good for rain, too, if it starts to rain. I mean, as far yeah. as, like, a person being able to dart under. Yeah, I mean, you can. Overhang. That way you can also work in the rain much more easily. You know, if you've got rainstorms coming in, you don't have to halt the whole work process. Um, so th those are some of the big advantages there. Um, also, having a roof up already um, usually requires that you have some sort of post and beam structure to support that roof. Um, so it can also help with sort of coating issues um, because if they, if I'm not going to get too in depth in this, and this can depend because every county is sort of different, but if you have a roof that's supported by a post and beam, um, it can be seen as much more favorable to a building department than the roof being supported by earthen walls. Because earthen walls and cob walls, things like that, are not understood in our uh, building uh, society today, whatever you want to call it. Um, they don't understand the load bearing capacity of earthen walls. So they, they look at it. So more suspiciously, uh, but if it's supported by post and beam, then they'll be much more favorable. So those are some of the main advantages to having a roof up from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I know when you're doing my cob wall, you're walking around on the top all the way around, and that yeah. helps compact it. Yep. But that might not be possible if there's a roof on it, right? Yeah, so that could be a downside to having the roof up already because it can be hard to um, stand on top of the earth wall as it's going up. You know, eventually it's going to get so high where you can't be walking on the top of it because the roof's in the way. 
So that can be a disadvantage. So there's pros and cons to it. Um, can I tell them what we've been working on lately? Or is um, that a surprise? No, that's cool. Um, we've been doing the lintels. We've already finished the lintels over the windows. And a lintel is basically a, it's hard to explain without a <laughs> diagram or a picture, but it, it covers the gap um, over the top of the window or the door um, so that you can put more cob above that gap. If that makes sense to you all. Mm -hmm. um, and it extends as well. Yeah. Uh, but you'll, you'll learn about that if you come to the workshop. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're really cool. Yeah. <laughs> They're really interesting. So anyway, we just built the ones over the doors this week. So we're letting those dry. We actually made them out of concrete. Um, that's what we decided to use here this time. And it works mm -hmm. really well. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, again, you guys, if, if you have any, any interest in hands-on learning with Cobb, natural building, person construction, we have a workshop coming up here in northern Florida in July, mm -hmm. end of July. So there's a link down below with information on that. You can get all the details there and sign up if interested. Um, yep, yeah, so I don't see any questions here. Uh, this is our first YouTube live. Um, so just thought I'd give it a try anyway. But Well, there's some more detailed questions, but I think that might be something that you have to address personally with some, I don't know, I don't know, maybe like a consultation perhaps. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's endless questions. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Um, scaffolding. You need scaffolding. scaffolding. Yeah. Yeah. If you're yeah. building, I just wanted to throw that in there. Um, yeah. True. True. Because I wasn't sure for myself. I think it was like a dreaded issue. It's like maybe I can hold off as long as possible, but eventually I had to get to the point where it's like, do I rent it? Do I build it? Do I buy it? <laughs> yeah. There's just a lot of stuff you need to build a house. A lot of people don't realize that, and they. They want to start a project. I mean, you got to have the tools, you got to have the machinery, the mm -hmm. supplies. But a lot of this stuff, stuff can be rented and it's cheaper than buying it. Yeah, now all the stuff's attainable. It's just uh, people have to be mentally prepared, financially prepared, um, you know, to put in the, the effort and, and the time and the money to do it. it it's just like building any kind of house. Um, <clears throat> building with cob is no different. Um, it's actually more labor intensive. So definitely something to keep in mind mm -hmm. when you're thinking about wanting to start a project. Mm -hmm. But like when the walls go up of a regular house, you still have to deal with different layers in the wall. Whereas with mm -hmm. Cobb, it's the same everything same material, going. The whole way through. Yeah. 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 So you're not dealing with like a, a layer of, Brick uh, and sheetrock yeah, and then. brick and, and wood and insulation and sheetrock. It's just earth the whole way up, pretty much. And then on the when you finish, you finish it off with a, a natural plaster. So there's fewer layers involved in the walls, but um, overall, it's still it's still more labor to put it together. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but they're thick. It's I mean, it's like a rock. Yeah, it's like making it's like sandstone. Yeah. Like, I mean, the wall is basically like sandstone, so it's it's very strong. Yeah, I could I could go on and on, but I don't know. Yeah, no, I think we'll we'll probably cut this live broadcast off here for now, and you know, it was our first YouTube live. But anyway, hope you guys got some value out of it, and um, we're gonna leave this video up. I'll leave it up on my channel. Um, you know, for people who want to come watch it later. But uh, yeah. Hope well, you guys thank you. It. Thank you for having me. Sure. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for coming on, helping me out with the broadcast. And um, I guess we'll cut it here. We'll talk All to you right. guys pretty soon. All right, thanks. All right. Bye.